At no point in our Lord's discourse with the Pharisees in today's gospel do the Pharisees in any way commend the Son of God. Indeed, it seems while they may be giving him a compliment by saying he is not concerned with the opinion of others, it is only to see if they could lure him in to giving in to human respect. And ultimately, they said it in order that he would say, of course, keep the money and do not give to Caesar what is Caesar's. But the Lord, knowing the hypocrisy, as the scripture tells us, speaks as he always does according to the truth. And so we are to learn that we are to give to Caesar what is Caesar's indeed. St. Thomas Aquinas speaks of the virtue of patriotism, which every member of the mystical body must exercise, but that patriotism must always and everywhere be rooted in the truth, for we cannot give to Caesar what is not Caesar's, and we know all too well in our own lives, in our own nation today, much of what Caesar, much of what the leaders claim belongs to God, and ultimately we must constantly fight to bring about the end of the sin of abortion in our nation and all those things that are clearly contrary to the will of God and ultimately not for the good end of mankind, that is, the salvation of their soul. And so much within the economic system must be changed and brought more in line with the truths of Holy Mother Church if we are to truly see a nation rise up, a nation whose first and foremost whose first and foremost thought is the salvation of the souls and all the members of that nation. And so, while we must always pray for our leaders, we must also, we must also work and, and give our entire effort to bring about those changes in society that will bring about a more Christian culture and hence a more sane culture and hence a more charitable culture. For a Christian culture is always good to fight for because... Often, souls who are lost are not lost in a Christian culture simply because the virtue of charity reigns too much in the hearts, in the minds of men. And so we, we truly love each other and are willing to correct each other in our sins, in our faults, in our failings, but not in that sanctimonious way um, of, of, of the Puritan or of the playboy, but in that charitable way by which we truly communicate not our love, but the love of Christ for all souls and for all members of the nation. And so we too must constantly pray to find out, and we must constantly pray to discern that true balance, which is Christian virtue, by which we truly love the leaders of our nation, while at the same time seeking to bring about the change of those things in our nation and in our society that are so clearly contrary to the will of God that they truly are known by all in the depths of their heart. And so, in our nation, we must truly fight for the dignity of the human person, for it is the human person who is assailed. And ultimately, when we see that, we must not, we must see through the, en- the visible enemies to the one who is truly instigating this revolution against God. And that is always and everywhere the enemy we can't see. That enemy that St. Peter warns us goes about the world like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. The enemy of our, of, of souls is Satan himself. And so we are in, in mortal combat against him and all that he seeks to do in order to descri- in order to destroy society. And so, Let us truly not be like the Pharisees and scribes seeking to manipulate the Lord in order to gain from him the answer that we need in order to bring about a false type of revolution that would, that would, that would replace the Roman rulers with the rulers of the Sanhedrin and simply transfer the power and the tyranny to another people and another land. For we know our Lord truly reigns by his power 
but he does not reign by tyranny. He reigns by love, and so that love must constantly be sought to be, in, to be brought into society. And indeed, to bring about the love of Jesus, Jesus Christ is a much more noble work and a much more difficult work. And so let us turn always to her who saw these things so well and never compromised, never compromised in the least in the least bit, the law of the Lord, that is, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who always did the will of God, who always sought the will of God, and who always loved her nation and, and, all, and prayed for its leaders and all its peoples. And so let us strive to imitate the Blessed Virgin Mary so that her presence may come about in our society, and it is truly her who can calm us from our life of sin and bring us back to our senses. Our senses, we are brought back to our senses when first and foremost we seek to serve the, the Lord our God who alone is our hope and who alone has the truth which frees mankind and, and builds true society indeed it is even possible to make the case that to call what is presently coming about in the world a society is truly an oxymoron for all true culture all true society must in some way be rooted in those truths of Jesus Christ and so let us pray that he may exert influence over all that which is noble over all institutions in this world and those institutions that in and of themselves are not in accord with the will of God and can never be sanctified. Let us pray that they are crushed and they disappear from the life of the human family so that they are replaced with that so that they are replaced with that which alone can bring joy to the human heart and joy to our society, that is the love of Christ, that love that the Lord has seen to be brought about by the cooperation of the members of his mystical body. And so let us strive always to let Christ love in us and let us always strive to give unto Caesar what is Caesar's but unto God what is God. And when Caesar usurps the, usur seeks to usurp that authority which he has not been entrusted with, let us at least by our prayers seek a change and then perform all those actions which are prudent and which will bring about that change in our society, in our nation, that will ultimately culminate in the true coronation, the coronation of Christ the King, because he has come to reign in the hearts of all the members of our nation and most especially in the hearts and mind of our rulers so that they may govern in accord with that which alone which is port and it import him. They may govern so that all families may be safely put on the road to heaven and ultimately complete that mission so that they can praise their good God with their leaders for all eternity in heaven.